welcome Citadel Shade and Contrast lovers. Yes, I have just been zenithaled by the rain. At least I'm not being killed by hay fever, which has been the last two weeks of recording. Anyway, today we have a brilliant one. We have my new favorite way to paint carapace, which is on the new Tyranids using Citadel Contrast. This isn't just for carapace though, you could apply this to scales. And then kind of uniquely, the thing that's helpful about this is those flowy, organic, smoothish surfaces, but still, you know, with some small details in them that normally are problematic for contrast, this method is brilliant for. So you've got something for the scales, which is just, you know, the normal contrast, how we've used it in previous videos. A lot of it's been on dragons. Um, we're taking those concepts, kind of spreading them out, thinning them down and taking a little bit more time. And that will allow you to cover those smooth flowing areas where maybe you've had ugly pulling or stuff in the past works really, really well. It's very, very good fun. Not only are we arming you with how to approach any flowing surface with contrast, but we're also gonna give you the tools at the end of this tutorial, so stick around for those, for you to be able to apply this with any color, not just the colors that we're demonstrating or showing examples of. You can apply this technique with any color you like. We're gonna give you a few rules to follow, very, very simple, and with those rules, you can go away, look at your contrast scheme or your color scheme that you've got currently, and then work out how to apply this technique with your colors. If you're new here, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Definitely do subscribe because we've got a lot of similar content coming up. If you're into the Tyranids, I really enjoyed the models and we've got a test schemes uh, one coming out soon, which has been very, very widely requested. One thing that we do do is the most liked comment below uh, will receive a brush set of their choosing and a texture palette of their choosing. So even if you don't have any suggestions for us for future content, pop down there and give a like to whatever you think is the best question, suggestion or criticism. We'll take them on board as well. Anyway, let's jump in. I really enjoyed this one. The end result kind of speaks for itself. Banana was my favorite. I don't know which one's your favorite. We did quite a few in the end, but um, yeah, let's go. So this is what we've just achieved and I'm gonna show you how to achieve it. On this guy, it's pretty simple and basically it takes contrast or slap chop principles and it applies them with a little bit more patience. You may have seen this theme recurring in our previous content. The reason that is, is because I think this is the best way to get the most out of contrast using all the benefits of it and then kind of enhancing them a little without necessarily adding additional steps. There aren't any highlights on this, but you could absolutely add highlights and this would be a perfect base for them. So let's go. We have our model. It has been base coated by hand. What if you need to put under the base coating by hand? That's fine. So this was Prime Chaos Black because I like that as a base, gave it a light dusting of white and then I've base coated it with Screaming Skull. So we're gonna slap chop this, which means there is gonna be some dry brushing involved. I have some Vallejo white on the palette. You could use Screaming Skull though. Basically, we just need one more step over this, and that is to make the raised bits slightly lighter than the other bits. Of course, slap chop normally goes from black uh, through gray to white, but we've skipped the first step because we're going for a really bright one here. The color that I've got is um, Screaming Skull, by the way, you could use any pastel-y color uh, like a pastel pink or pastel green would be absolutely fine, depending what you've got going um, going over the top of it. This is just pretty neutral, um, and I quite like the behavior of the paint. There we go, so picked out the raised areas slightly more. My brush could have been cleaned a bit more beforehand, but it's fine. Okay, stage one. So we're gonna put down a lighter base. Um, and then we're going to kind of make it dark with the following steps. So the base is going to involve a little bit of Fugan Orange and maybe a tiny bit of Imperial Fist. We've also got Sepia on hand if needed. Shake them hard, whatever you're using. I can't give you any ratios for this. Obviously I could for this mix, but you can use the exact same methods for any color you can think of. And rather than giving you a ratio, I'm just going to give you how this looks against a reflective surface because I think that is about as good a measure as you're going to be able to get. Imperial Fist's a bit stronger. It's got a really warm orange there. and I'm just going to grab a little bit of a shade. Just going to thin it down. Now the base coat is going to go down in probably two steps. And this is how I approach all contrasting. Even if I'm going for speed, it is absolutely worth doing the second step always. Two thinner steps generally will give you a kind of more consistent result. Now, I've picked an orientation, which is one where I can easily reach all the bits that I need to from. I'm going to try and not change that orientation on my model one bit. If I change the orientation while the paint has started running in one direction, it's going to start running in another direction, and that is bad. 
something you need to bear in mind while it's drying to, you know, even if it's not in your hand, uh, the orientation is still a thing. So I'm not allowing any excessive pulling anywhere. And the way that I think of this is my model becomes my little dippy palette. So I'll put down probably more than is needed, but then I will use that section as my palette until I'm not getting enough on the brush. And then I'll repeat that process until I've covered all of the model. You have to work kind of fast with contrast. So be confident, but don't put quite as much on your brush as maybe you're used to. If you're allowing yourself to be messy, which we are, go over your edges. It's safer than trying to go up to them. You might end up missing bits because you just about couldn't see them. And go all the way around the edges on this. It's very helpful to have somewhere to hold your models as well. Okay, so I don't think we've got, apart from a little hole that we had there, had a window in it. I don't think we've got any excessive pooling anywhere that we need to fix. One thing that you can do is I have a little kind of, uh, this holds my Dippy Well palettes here, and then I might have a tablet or a phone just propped up here for art reference. So if you're unsure about pulling areas or anything like that, just pull up a GW model, the same one that you're doing, get the right angle on the 360 view. They're really clean and clear with their paint jobs and very, very precise. So the readability is very high. So if you're looking where to place a highlight and you're not sure, you can always just copy theirs. All right, can let that dry and we come back and we're just gonna repeat that. Quick note, if you're batching, this probably isn't required, but if you are using a hairdryer, on models when you're using contrast or washes ever, waggle it around a little bit after hair drying it and let the model cool down because the warm model will actually drastically decrease the drying time for your washes or your contrasts. And that's quite bad. That means that you'll get tidal marks more easily or generally you might make mistakes more. Right, our model has been cooled down. I'm just gonna repeat that step again. Worked quite well last time going um, bottom to top, top to bottom. So I'll reverse it. And the reason for doing that is if there's anything that's kind of caused by me doing things in a certain order, I want to get rid of that. We don't want it to be thick anywhere. Just looking to carefully tint it in the directions that we want. Again, no excess pulling and work quick. Generally speaking, the, uh, the advice that I give most people is put less on your brush and just go faster. Okay, we're getting, beginning to build up that depth now. Okay, so while it dries, what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly gonna take some Caribou Crimson I'm going to add it into my mix. While we're here, because it's evaporated a little bit, I'm just going to grab some contrast medium. So we did get a little bit of pulling I should have mopped up here. Sometimes it can look okay, but in the middle of a, a section like that, it should either be full or not. And we kind of went halfway between the two. So with some slightly deeper colors going on, this should be where we start seeing the potential of the technique got our bright orangey base and now we're just looking to tint it in whatever direction we want. If you live in a hotter country or you're in the UK currently where it is unbelievably unprecedentedly hot you might want to use a little bit more medium or you could use a soft shade like we've used the sepia just to kind of dilute it a little bit more. It'll give you more drying time and it'll kind of soften things. The other option is to work really quick but at a certain speed, you're just going to increase your chance for mistakes. Okay, looking good. I might have gone a tiny bit too thick at one section here, so I'm going to be particularly careful there in the following stages. It's now time to be a little bit braver with our Carabao Crimson. So I watered it down with water here, and we're going to carefully try and run it into some recesses taking a lot of it off the brush. And basically, now after this many steps, we've got some really good indications on the model of where the pooling has happened. They're gonna be our guidelines. You can see this one in particular, it's kind of really showing us a very good example. Um, you can also use the GW model behind you for this. And what we're gonna do is starting in the middle of areas that are next to areas we want darker, we're just gonna to push towards and end our stroke in the darker areas. Called your lift off point, the last place that your brush has been, it will leave the most paint works for paint and for washes and for contrast for everything. It's the opposite of a pencil. So whether you're copying the guidelines set by the contrast already, or you want to enhance a particular bit, you just start next to the bit and then end in the part that you'd like to become the darker. So for me, in these top details that we have here, if I want it to be darker at the top of that or the bottom of that, we could do it like that. Or like that. Okay, so we're just scooting around now. After the first step, uh, which I tend to be a little bit too delicate with, 
because I'm worried, but you know, it's sensible to be worried like that. It's pretty much always the case that I'll just gain in confidence. And then after that, I'll be a lot braver. And it's here where we can really enhance things. And of course, if you put a dark edge next to a lighter edge, which happens a lot on carapace or things like this, you end up with instant areas of high contrast. And we've got all of this without actually putting a, an edge highlight down anywhere. That is essentially it. You can go for as long as you want. Um, the more transparent the layers are, the easier you can get away with it. I'm going to quickly tint the entire thing once I've exaggerated a few of these. And then that'll give you an idea of kind of the overall impression that you can get. So having done that, the final step is just to carefully lay this down all over. So you want to use it pretty thin. This is a glaze. We've, we've already been glazing, even though it's with contrasts. We've got some shades mixed in, I guess. And we're going to softly pull this all over everywhere. It'll pull more in the recesses as a matter of default, but you're not aiming for it to pull in the recesses. I'm going to quickly go over. We don't want it too thick at any one point. Mop it up if you do. Just press your brush into it. Don't use a brush that's too small for this, by the way. You'll just give yourself a harder job. You want a brush that's got good mopping capabilities. And with this all over, that should tie everything we've done together. And if you wanted to at this point, you could absolutely edge highlight it and it would look incredible, but it already looks great. Final, um, like really, really important, powerful option is to put satin varnish down over this and instantly that'll add a load of the depth and all the stages you've done. I'll kind of highlight those in a really beautiful way. Okay, so that went really well. Now, how do you take our principles and what are our principles to apply them to whatever colors you like? It's pretty easy and it can be broken down into four fairly simple steps. So your base coat or your undercoat is going to be generally a light color. If you would like a darker end effect, then you can absolutely choose like a darker gray or a brown or something like that. But we're kind of, it's like slap drop, but you just skip out the black. So we're going from the light middle color that was all over, could be zenithal if you like, and then a light dry brush of white just to hit those edges a little extra bit. You need to start from a light base because we're putting down multiple layers and you cannot add lightness without going back and adding white and we're doing washes, so you can't do that. So as a result, we have to start a little bit lighter, brighter, and that's gonna keep our end result lighter. Of course, you can just take it down and down and down and down and down until you're happy with it. So there's not really any downsides to that light base as long as you're willing to put a few more steps in. Step two is your kind of contrast mix, which I would do once, twice, uh, twice is your minimum really, you want a decent coverage on this and this is what's going to lay that foundation for the rest of your colours to deepen over. If it is a mix like ours was, probably the mix is going to involve a contrast colour and then a slightly darker colour which you'll put in a bit, that might be a shade, it might be a contrast, it could be the red or the sepia or something like that. That deeper colour is going to come into things in the next step. Step number three, this is your X factor, your deepening colour and this is where you get kind of the the cool bit, I don't know how to put it. This is where you get the nice stuff uh, using this method. So you're gonna have your lightest color at the very edges and then the recesses, you're gonna have your darkest color. Between that, in that little zone, this is where this color, your X factor, is really gonna make a difference. For us, that was the red. So it's like a deeper color. If you look at your main color, check out a color wheel. You don't have to have one in your hands. Don't get scared about the concept of this. Very simple principle. Look at your main color and you can go up to three hops to one side or the other to a deeper color and that will be your shade color. So that could be red for us on top of our yellow. It could be purple on top of blue. These are ones that I've actually done, they've all worked, stuff like that. Inversely, for your highlights, you could just go in the opposite direction or you could add a bone color. Step number four, this is quite a simple one and this is kind of a homogenizing uh, coat that you put over everything. So you, whatever's happened, if things have gone really well or if they've not gone really well, you still wanna try and tie things together at the end. So you could be using your X Factor color for this, very thin all over, like two or three thin coats, thin down a lot, and that'll you know deepen everything and darken everything slightly. Or you could take your starting color and you could thin that down and you can put that over it and then maybe that'll bring it up a bit. If that was our yellow, it'll bring us you know, it'd keep things slightly lighter and brighter. If it was our red, it'd darken everything, make it look a bit deeper, a bit more saturated. Entirely up to you. Either is fine. You can always experiment in a recess, which is what I tend to do, or, you know, around a hidden bit under a leg or something like that, if you're not sure. Kind of a bonus bit to touch on the highlights again. Something we've done, we did it on our Dragon Bus that was very popular, is you can just take a any off-white color or a pastel, and you can add what was your first color to it. So the contrast colors that are they're quite strong these days. 
If you take something like Screaming Skull or Ivory or Pastel Blue or Pastel Green or anything like that, and you take a little bit of the mix that you used initially as your very first coat, your one to two coats of contrast, and you dot that in there, that will instantly change that color to something that makes sense as a highlight color. You can then use that to highlight your mini and you can reduce the amount of your uh, contrast mix that's in it or add a white to that or something for highlights as well. Pretty simple, quite basic, but a really good way to approach kind of deepening down with your X factor and then highlighting up with your highlights if you want to spend that extra time maybe for a character model or something like that. That's it, that's all the rules. So let's see us taking them in theory and applying them to something. We got a green, there we go, that's a green. Slightly yellowy green, I think we use Mantis Warriors. And very simply, I'm gonna look what's deeper, blue. I'm gonna go a couple of steps to turquoise or to blue in this direction. If you've got a pure green, you could go to a, a blue violet if you wanted. But whatever you do, it's just hopping three steps in one direction. It'll be a really good way to kind of deepen things and bring them down. Don't go really far, because if you choose opposite things on a color wheel, you just end up making brown. So unless that's what you want, don't do it. Um, you can, if you want to desaturate stuff and you do want things brown, you've got so many choices out there. Um, Seraphim Sepia, Sepia is a really good kind of soft, gentle way to do it. And you can put a little bit of purple in that or something like that if you want to of deepen it even further. Any questions about this stuff whatsoever, do ask below. And also, if you want to see someone who is a genius of color stuff and explanation, check out Marco NJM, uh, not just Mecca, his channel. He is wonderful as a person and also as a teacher. So uh, yeah, check out his stuff. So uh, yeah, let's see how our green one went. All right, we are done, that's it. So hopefully that has brought some kind of general concepts to you that maybe you can start thinking about in your own painting. If any of them have been difficult or used any terminology or anything like that that you find, um, you know, it makes it unhelpful, just pop it below and we'll clarify anything you need. The viewers in the comments are also really helpful. So maybe someone else will jump in and get your question there. We do read each and every one, even if we don't get time to reply to them. But um, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Please subscribe. We've got plenty more content coming soon, a veritable onslaught of it. I touched on this earlier. I have been being murdered by hay fever. So we're going to have a few more voiceovers on our stuff <laughs> um, because I just simply haven't been able to talk. And looking at a camera has been making me cry. It still is now a little bit, even though it's raining outside. Yeah, that's going to be noticeable in some of the content, as is my voice, which is beginning to go. I managed all of this, though. I'm proud of myself. So yeah, plenty more content coming up, whether I'm voiceovering it or not. And there are a few things that we've hinted at in the past that we're going to drop soon. The test schemes uh, is a big one. Uh, it's a very, very large, uh, just kind of honest look at what it is like to try and design a color scheme and to try and get there with some test models. So it took us four goes, but it turned out really well. And um, we'll pop up the end result of that somewhere on screen now. There's several Tyranids. The Tyranids are great. I will be doing some Space Marine stuff soon. And we've got one on dry brushing to a high quality and then edge highlighting, which is kind of a first formal look at it as a technique in the channel. So um, plenty of exciting stuff to come. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.